Hi, I'm Dawn O'Porter, author of The Cows. And this is Jill Sims, author of Why Mummy Drinks and Why Mummy Swears. How sweary are you? Uh, I don't think I can say on here. <laughs> are we allowed to swear? I'm just going to go to the production team. Are we allowed to swear? <laughs> I'm oh, they said no in my ear. How boring. OK, well, I can still ask you how much you swear. Not very much at all. Never, R never. not me. No, 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 no. Are well, you maybe a little bit. A little bit. More than a little bit. See, I'm very sweary. <laughs> and I've also... Uh, what about swearing in front of your kids? Um, I, I try not to, uh, but the, there, are, there are moments um, when something slips out. In fact, there was, there was quite, a, uh, quite a proud moment, actually, with my son once. And he, he, was, he was quite late to read. He, was, he showed no interest in spelling or anything else. And I was in the car and someone cut me up and I went... <laughs> and said something I really shouldn't and this little voice just piped up from the back of the car. Mummy, you said S-H and the rest. I was like, oh, darling, you can spell. I'm really very proud of you. Just turn it around. <laughs> yes, Make it positive. Yes. Yeah, oh, that's sorry. very good. What about you? Do you? I'm really sweary and I haven't ma managed yet not to be. And I've, I'm, I think I've got a bit of a 70s approach to it where I think they'll get it out of their system and then they won't be really sweary kids. Yeah, that, was, that was my hope, yeah. um, but my, mine have started too slightly, actually. Although the worst, the worst thing was, um, they're, they're a bit older, so they, they've forbidden me to, to speak of their age on the internet okay. because they get all these internet safety things at school. Right. Um, and so they, they've said, Mother, you must never never mention us on the internet for, for bad things will happen. OK, fair enough. Um, but no, I tried, I tried really hard not to swear in front of them in the car for a while because I realised I, I was just coming out with strings of obscenities every time yeah. something happened. And then um, I thought, right, I'm going to be good. I'm going to stop doing this. And then a cyclist came, came up the inside of me and cut me up. And I was, uh, instead of calling them a bad name, I said, bumhead. And for whatever reason, that was what stuck in my son's mind. And for the next five years or so, every time we passed a cyclist, he'd shout, bumhead. Bumhead. But the other words at that point didn't register with him. But bumhead was apparently a great word. I okay. assume we're allowed to say that. <laughs> I think bumhead's a great word. I, I use that regularly. Yeah, it is a good word. It's a very satisfying word. Yeah. Bumhead. <laughs> yeah, or I live in America, so you have to say butthead because they don't, they don't use bums over there. Um, which, anyway, we'll move on to swearing because what I'm realising is that you're a really nice person. I'm a terrible person because I'm so sweary in front of my children. And at some <laughs> point, I'm going to have to stop being so, but that is how it's rolling at the moment. So why do you think your books are so successful then? What did you tap into there? I think the drinking and swearing, maybe. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. People keep asking that. And I, I, I'm not entirely sure. But I think it just turns out there's a lot more drinky, sweary mums like, like me, um, because I'm really not that nice and I do swear quite a lot, um, out there. And, and people were quite relieved to find that they also weren't the only ones who lock themselves in a cupboard um, with a packet of biscuits or a large gin and, and sit there muttering obscenities to themselves while yeah. the children are like, Mummy, where are you? <laughs> and, and then you say, no, no, I don't, I don't know why you can smell chocolate. No, there's no chocolate here, no chocolate here. No, no, no darling, no, <laughs> you're imagining it. And mummy's busy. Mummy's busy, mummy's very busy. <laughs> <laughs> you go back to see babies. <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, because they, they are, I think you're right. I think you tapped into something where women would be like, oh, it's actually not all glitz and glamour being a mum, is it? It's not all so blessed and, and making memories and cupcakes, as, as I'm sure you, you know as well. Can't make cupcakes. Um. <laughs> They're fizzy. I tried once. They were literally fizzy. Well, then, you know, you're a failure as a mother then, aren't you? Just you know, if there's, if there's no cupcakes, failed. you know, can you even call yourself a mother? Yeah. Um, flapjacks? No. I can cook savoury stuff, just can't bake. No, well, I, I, I tried baking with my children um, to, to make memories, to treasure every moment and... Um, <laughs> just awful. Yeah. yeah. How, how, how did they manage to smash six eggs on the floor and, and get none of it in the bowl? No. So, so yes, I'm, I'm not one of those lovely sort of here they are in an apron looking adorable. I, I'm one of those. What are you doing there, darling? Yeah. <laughs> darling, please. So, so I think baking with your children is overrated anyway. It is. So. Yeah, I think actually baking is pretty overrated. Um, it's good, but the actual baking it is not so good. So you've got your journal coming out next week. I do. So tell me about I that. I do. So that's uh, a little diary of, of the year for, for people to fill in themselves, to put down their own thoughts, their own sweary moments, their own baking fails. Or successes, mm -hmm. successes. Some people are very good at baking. Um, so so it's, it's to kind of fill in with whatever people want. So there's rough themes for every month that they can follow or not. Or they can just tear pages out of it and give it to their children to colour in while they sit in the cupboard with a <laughs> yeah, pack of chocolate biscuits. Make paper airplanes. Yeah, you know, whatever they want. Do you keep a diary? <laughs> um, not really, no. Mm. No, I think I, I, I did when I was a teenager, very, um, the, the usual teenage diary, very angst-ridden and deep and meaningful and, and one day somebody might read it and it would, it would 
they would they would see what a deep and meaningful person I was, and then you read it back two years later and go, yeah. oh, God, just burn, burn it, burn Have it. you still got them? No. No. No, I've no idea where they are. Um, I hope they're burnt. <laughs> they're somewhere. So what about you? Did, did you I, always write and keep a diary? Yeah, or? I had a diary until I was about probably uh, 16, and from about 13 to 16, and I re-found them when I was writing because I wrote a young adult book a few years ago and I found them and I read them, kind of got halfway through and was like, I just can't. It's very... I'd like to say it was sweet, but it wasn't sweet. It was just so, oh, God, shut up, banging on about... <laughs> this. It was, I'm very into, like, um, being popular, which is quite still a trait of mine now. We're just, like, desperately trying to get people to like me, which, when you read about it, is just soul-destroying, because you're just, like, you know that's a part of who you are, but you can't literally read a paragraph saying, I'm desperate for this person to like me. If she doesn't like me, I'm just going to be sad for the rest of my life, blah, blah, blah. Full of that. So did you find them quite useful for writing your young I adult I did find though? them, yeah. I did. Well, just getting back into that 15-year-old mind mm -hmm. about what you care about. You've got no real... I got brought up in Guernsey where there wasn't any politics or anything like that. So it was all about your family and your social life. And I needed to be reminded of the stuff that doesn't matter when you're 15. And mm -hmm. like, nothing mattered apart from that. Uh-huh. I know. The things you think matter when you're 15 are, are so... You, you wish, actually, that was all you had mattered now. I know, it, exactly. Really? I do um, think that the teenagers now, though, are slightly more... Um, active politically and stuff like that so it probably is quite different which means it wasn't really the kind of book where I could go and speak to teenagers in the modern world and ask them what it's like being a teenager they needed I needed to remember what it was being like a teenager in Guernsey in the 90s which mm -hmm. is something that will just never exist again no no sadly not but how, how, how different did you find it then going from young adult writing to, to writing the, the cows which is a much more adult book <laughs> with more adult themes I think it's literally just the age of the characters. Because I remember when I was writing Paper Airplanes, I never at any point thought, oh, I should be careful what I say here because teenagers are reading this, or, um, or any other thought than this is just what two 16-year-old girls are doing. And then with the cows, I'm writing about women in the 30s and 40s, so therefore your approach to sex or relationships or whatever it is is just a more mature... A, 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 it's just different. Mm -hmm. But I, I don't think I ever... It's my microphone dropping on the floor. I don't think I ever actually thought, um, oh, there's a different way of writing. Mm -hmm. Because I also think, like, one thing about reading those diaries back is even though it was all a bit, um, you know, shameful in the quest to be popular, still quite emotionally intelligent when it comes to feelings. And you are doing stuff, like you are kissing boys or having sex with boys or doing whatever you're doing and drinking alcohol and all things you shouldn't be doing. And whether it's good or bad, you are doing it and having an experience of doing it. So. I think teenagers are quite fun to write because they've got no real... They're not thinking about the consequences of anything. They're just having, like, real... They still think they're immortal and quite invincible and, and, and will live forever, don't they? Yeah. I think there's that, that wonderful thing about being a teenager is that, that nothing... Although, although the tiny things of life are huge issues for you that because if that boy doesn't like you mm -hmm. or that boy doesn't kiss you or you don't go to that party or you don't get that top and... And they, they seem so important to you at the time, but you're so concerned, I think, as a teenager with those little things that you don't really think about the big things, yeah. like, like the fact that you're going to grow up and have to get a mortgage and, or have children and one day yeah, life will become very real and serious. You, you just, you're so focused on those, those tiny little, now to us, are inconsequential details, yeah. but to you then as a teenager are just, just the end of the world if it doesn't yeah. happen or, or it's the best thing in the world if it does happen or... Um, but it must be hard for teenagers nowadays because it was bad enough, I don't, you know, when you, when you were waiting for a boy to call you. I know. Um, on your mainline phone with your on, parents. On your mainline phone with it and, and trying to get to it for your dad because yeah. you're, there's a boy boy. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> um, and now, but at least, you know, while you're at school and things, you wouldn't be thinking, is he going to text me? Is he going to call me? Is he going to Snapchat me? Has he messaged me? You know, yeah, you, could, you could kind of put it completely to, yeah, to one completely side different. until you got home and then it was like, is he going to call me? Can yeah. I get to it before my mum? Um, how am I going to explain why this boy calling me and everything else? So it, must be, it must be difficult for teenagers these days with all that additional pressure. Couldn't imagine. Can I ask how old you are? I'm 40. Thank you. So same, <laughs> we're the same. I'm 40 in a couple of months. So we were the last generation of kids who I... just had that very kind of uh, no internet, no mobile phones. No, what didn't know about email when we were teenagers. Everything was very pure and simple. Very grateful to be that last generation. I like know. we, we really are. We'll be the grandparents that speak about a time that kids can't even imagine. I showed, I showed my child a phone box. Like my, my son, we passed a phone box. He went, what, "What's that, mummy?" And I was, "It's a phone box, darling." 
like, what, what on earth is that? They said, well, you, you go in, you put money in and, and you make a phone call. And we went in and looked at it and, and it was actually full of cobwebs. It had been so long since anyone had gone into the phone box and made a phone call. And he was like, that's so weird. Yeah, why, so why weird. Would you, why would you do that? And also, why is there that, that picture of that lady in her bikini <laughs> with her phone number underneath it? I know, phone boxes are so weird now, aren't they? Oh, he, just, he could not wrap his head around the concept of a phone box. Yeah. Um, but why wouldn't you just use your mobile? But people still use them. Do they? I think so. They've got new ones in Guernsey Town Square, well, reasonably new, and there were people in them when I was there a few weeks ago. I think they've got internet and things, and you can charge your mobiles in them and that things. That is just... That's... I don't know if anyone actually uses them to put in there. I think it's... it's, it's it, the, well, when I looked with my son, it was 20p. It's a lot. 20p to make a phone call. Yeah. <laughs> but I guess they've now got to try and work out how to use all those phone boxes and find a use for them. <laughs> so, like, okay, charge your phone in here. Just stand in here for 20 <laughs> minutes while you charge your phone. Uh -huh. So at what point of being a mum did you decide to write books about being a mum? Um... I didn't really. It, it, I, I started a, a blog um, as Jake with a friend and it all snowballed from there. So there wasn't really a, a conscious decision of today I'm going to write a book about being a mum. Um, I, I, I kind of started writing this blog about being not a bad mum, but uh, a mum who found things a bit more difficult than, than some of the, the more perfect curated uh, aspects of motherhood on the internet. Um, and it all kind of went from there. Uh, so, so it wasn't it wasn't really. A, I've, I've never been very good at having a, a conscious plan of what I'm going yeah. to do with my life. And right by the time I'm forty, I will have ticked that off, and I will have ticked that off, and I will have ticked that off. I just kind of stumbled through in in chaos. Well, then how um, nice to stumble across a really successful writing career. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Yes, I think it's it's yes. Usually, I just as I say, stumble across chaos and leave more chaos in my wake. So to actually stumble across something no so fantastic and amazing. <laughs> Just to be clear. Um, and so we're now, so you've done Mummy, Why Mummy Drinks, uh -huh. Why Mummy Swears. Yes. And what's next? Uh, hopefully, hopefully, Why Mummy, I don't know, Why, why Mummy... Why Mummy's eats, wearing this? Why Mummy's why mummy is why, what we do? <laughs> why Mummy's rocking in the corner? Why Why Mummy's eating all the chocolate biscuits? I like Why Mummy's rocking in the corner. <laughs> I think that's strong. So, what about Why Mummy isn't on the PTA? Why Mummy isn't? Oh, yeah, Why Mummy isn't on the PTA? <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's one thing about parenting that I'm like, it's all quite fun when I'm really young, but then when people talk about schools, I'm like, oh no, this sounds like it's going to be awful. This whole other life that we don't know about yet. It can be and it can't be. You can meet some great people. You can meet some people who I don't think have ever left the playground themselves. Yeah. Um, and don't realise they're now on the other side of the school gate and, right. and should really, you know, maybe grow up a little bit. But you yeah. can also meet some amazing people and make some great friends. So it's kind of, I think you just have to go into it hoping for the best and braced for the worst. What about things <laughs> like making costumes? Because that's the thing about being a mum that I'm like, I... I don't. I just don't think I'm going to be able to make any costumes. No, I'm, I wasn't very good at it. Do you have to do it? It's kind of expected. Oh, God, it's going to be awful. It's kind of expected. Baking My... and costume making. Yes. Well, you don't have to do the baking. You can just oh, no, can buy, buy, the cookies buy, buy cakes. And also and buy, and buy the costumes. Buy the costumes. Um, I always found that was the easiest way. I did try to make a costume once. I was very proud of it. I made a Thing 2 costume for my son. So he had a T-shirt with Thing 2 on it already. And I stayed... You know those shower puffy things, yeah. those nylon things yeah. you get. I unravelled some blue ones of them and stapled them onto a shower cap for the thing to hair. That's so innovative. I was so proud of it. Apparently it all f <laughs> apparently his head got really sweaty and the shower things had fallen off by break time. Oh. <laughs> and it was the worst costume in the school and could I just buy one next time, please? But did you get a photo of him in it? So when he's forgotten that, when he's a grown up, you can just show him this amazing costume He'll that probably you just him. say, I just remember how sweaty my head was. Okay. <laughs> um, Fair enough, yeah. So, but, you know, you'll, you'll get there. You'll get there. I don't know. So, I don't know if I can. Oh, you will. Um, you so will. what kind of books do you like reading? Uh, apart from the cows. Apart from the cows. I did love the cows. <laughs> I did love the cows. I finished it last night. Actually, I stayed up much too late finishing it. Um, it's, it's very good. Everyone should read it. Um, I do like a bit of Jilly Cooper. Just something yeah. funny. Something funny is always good. You can't, you can't beat Jilly Cooper with a big stick, I don't think. And what about if you're going to go down the non-funny route? Like, what kind of vibe would you go for? Would you be into horror? Would you be into crime? Or do you just avoid that and just want to have a laugh when you read? Uh, a bit of horror is quite good. I get a bit confused. I'm not very clever. I get a bit confused by crime stories. And I don't know who's who and, and what's know. happening there. And, and, and oh, I've, I've, I've missed something vital yeah. earlier on. Yeah, and, I and, and now I don't know what's happening. So, so uh, I get confused by them. So, um, But horror is always good. Horror is always good. Frightening yourself late at night. What about you? Well, I mean, to be honest with you, reading at the moment is just such a rare luxury. I find... My kids are just so small. 
Mm. For the second I woke up in the morning, it's all go, and then work full time, and then all go into bedtime. And by go, say to my husband, right, I'm going to go to bed and read a book, and within after a page, I've just passed out. So how do you fit writing in? Because that's the nine to five. That's the nine to five. Yes. So that's all. That's actually the more the more organised in terms of getting work done than I've ever been before. Because usually I would have just been at home and do a few hours here and a few hours there, and now I go to an office from nine to five and I just write my socks off so all quite day. Quite disciplined about the which about is the whole thing. brilliant. Yeah, I never could have imagined that. So writing the work is taken care of. My editor probably wouldn't agree with that, but I think the work's taken care of. But yeah, the reading is now such, such, it takes me such a long time to get through a book. I'm actually reading Cecilia Ahern at the moment, uh, Raw, which is a collection of short stories about um, women and it's really fun. And it's quite nice because you can just read one or two a night and you like, it's only like five or six pages per uh -huh. one. And that's actually working really well for me at the moment. I think but, yeah. I found the same when mine were small because you don't need that long concentration span either. Yeah. It just isn't there. And as you say, you, you find yourself nodding off. Although I do love audiobooks. Do you do any audiobooks? I haven't. I haven't. Everybody's telling me I need to do audiobooks. They seem to be the way forward. They are. Um, However, what I've realised about audiobooks is that's what I do when I walk the dog. But because our dog's in America at the moment, I'm not doing that dog walk, which means I'm not listening to audiobooks right. either. See, I, I, just... I, I have to concentrate on my dog when I'm walking him because otherwise, he, if, I, if I get distracted by anything, even if I'm just looking at my phone, he's like, aha. Her full focus is not on me. I shall go now. Oh, really? Ah, he's ah, a bolter. And he's a bolter. He's a bolter. He's a terrible bolter. The other really good thing about audiobooks, you can have headphones on and then no one talks to you. That which is, is a, always a bonus, isn't it? I'm a nice person, <laughs> I promise. But I find that like having to have early morning conversations with people just because of our dogs, I find it quite difficult. So all like headphones on. I'm just like on the phone. I'm on the phone. Sorry, morning. <laughs> lovely. You look great today. Great. Have a lovely day. You're on the phone. Oh, that must be quite good on trains and things as well. Because they, they seem to have. I seem to have one of those faces. I'm the person on the train. People want to sit next to and then tell me their life story. And sometimes that's lovely and that's great. But but sometimes you you are just it's it's too early. I, I need a cup of tea. I know, but also. So who are the people that want to have a conversation when they get on a train? Who are these I people? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know because... Imagine my dad would be that person. Sometimes, sometimes, you know, you think, oh, they're older people, maybe they haven't talked to anybody in a while, and then they tell you about, you know, their 15 grandchildren and they're off to see yeah. da 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 yeah. and you think they've got a better social life than I yeah. do. <laughs> um, so no, I think some people just like talking to people. Um, Such a strange thing to like. I know. <laughs> What's wrong with them? What's wrong? My dad's the kind of person that, you know, you'd get on a long haul flight. And you think, oh, great, I'm going to just knuckle down, go to sleep. He would talk to you the whole way. <laughs> He's that guy. And I, yeah. I, 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 do you know what? The, the thing about that, though, is I'm the kind of person who would be, as soon as someone starts talking to me, I'm like, oh, this is going to be awful. But as soon as you just get over that and engage back, generally, you learn something wonderful about the human existence and actually hear quite nice stories. Like you, talking to taxi drivers. Yes, you quite often do. You quite often do. I've, I've learned all kinds of interesting things from talking yes. to taxi drivers, mostly about geography. Um, yes. Most of the, the taxi drivers around where we are um, are from Eastern Europe or India or Pakistan. And, I, so they, they tell me where they're from and, and I find out that's not where I thought it was at all. I know, I know. <laughs> And I'm like, oh God, I'm so ashamed of how bad my geography is. But they've always um, got these amazing stories about uh -huh. how they came to be driving this cab and where they've been and where they've come from. It is. Talking to taxi drivers is actually a real winning situation. That's one thing I do like doing. Uh -huh. I had a fantastic Iranian taxi driver last year who was telling me all about it and how wonderful it is. Um, and there's a good friend of mine married to, to an Iranian lady and I was telling her about this and he was like, right, you have to go to Iran. There's the Iranian consulate there. Well, go and get your visas now. <laughs> he was just tall guy, yeah, you? Yeah, okay. <laughs> that sounds great. I went back to my husband and said, we're going to Iran. And he's like, maybe in a couple of years. Maybe darling. in a couple of years. <laughs> maybe yeah. not just yet. Yeah. Yeah, that's a big ask from a tax driver to just want to take you to Iran straight away. Yeah. <laughs> like, let's, just, let's just work on this. He, he should be working for their tour, tourist board because he, he really sold it. Do you um, think you'll go? Oh, that would be amazing. Yeah. Yeah, that would be amazing. It would be. Um, travel somewhere new and different. So, do you like travelling? I mean, yes, we do it a lot for work, so it, it happens all the time. And actually, but I've got to the point where a holiday would just be a week at home without doing anything. Um, but yes, we do travel, and I love it. But my kids are so small, nothing's really fun. So we just kind mm. of got this idea that in like three years' time, the holidays will start, and that it will just, you know, actually be a relaxing experience. But most of the time, I I've, I've flew on my own with them both back from California two months ago. And it was just horrendous. So I did a lot of transatlantic with my daughter when she was a toddler. Oh. Um, my husband was working in, in Houston and we were back and forth a lot. And it's not fun, is it? And you're, oh, also, it's, it's you're also aware awful. it's not fun for anyone else around you yeah. either. Well, so my baby the um, whole way was just trying to get the man next to me's glasses off. 
It's a 10 hour flight. In the end, he just gave him his glasses. Oh, no. Because I said to him, I'm really sorry, the only way that I can stop him doing this is to be quite <laughs> violent with him. And I, can't, I just can't do more. I'm like trying to protect this man from the child. And in the end, he just gave him the glasses. Oh, that's so sweet. That's so, so sweet. Nice. Because not everyone's that's like that. Really it's on an lovely. airplane when you've got a young child. But yeah, so that as far as traveling as goes, love it. But just try and keep it to when we have to go anywhere, which annoyingly is quite a lot. Oh. Not annoyingly. We're supposed to be talking about books, though, aren't we? Oh, sorry, <laughs> sorry. We've gone completely off topic, mm. um, and, and now we're stealing glasses from people on um, we are. airplane. We are. But let's write a book about it, and then we'll loop it in. I think right. So. I think that's it. Yeah, um, you've had some. Thing. You've had some questions through Facebook. I have. I have. I'm going to ask them to you, so okay. that you can answer in your best interviewee way. Okay. Um, this is from Justine Kelly. Hi, Justine Kelly. How do you find time to write such wonderfully entertaining masterpieces? Do you lock yourself in the downstairs loo for peace? If the Moppets are home for any reason, does GT sprite them away? Um, the Moppets, the Moppets, my darling Moppets, find me writing to be a wonderful excuse to lock themselves away mm -hmm. on their screens. And no, Mummy, no, we haven't. We haven't been on them for very long at all. Um, so no, it's mostly mostly while they're while they're out at, at school or, or whatever else. Um, so so do you get to do like a proper working day? I should do. I should do till about. Uh, half past three, four o'clock, but I, I procrastinate an awful lot. I'm not as disciplined as you. I, I should be. There's a lot um, of tweeting going on that nine to five. <laughs> Let's just be clear. <laughs> um, so, no, I faff about a lot. You know, I, I have to walk the dog and everything else in all that time. Which How do you find working from home? Um, I think that's why I procrastinate so much. Yeah, it's tough. Um, so so there's, there's always something, you know, it's, it's amazing how clean your house can mm -hmm. be when, when you're trying to write a book. Um, because, oh, look, you know, I, oh, I should dust that corner. I don't yeah. think I've ever dusted that corner in all the time we've lived here, but I should really do that. Um, but if I didn't work from home, it would it would upset the dog. So he, yeah, he needs, fair enough. He needs me there. He's very. Have you needy. got like a nook or a, do you write at the kitchen table? I have to write on the sofa because that's where he's comfortable. Um, because if I if I try writing at a desk or at a table or anything, he gets very upset and he comes up and he hits me with his paw, and he and he sneezes at me and, and he gets really quite irritated. Um, and I tried sitting the dog him on my is knee. Very demanding. It's very isn't demanding. He? I tried sitting him on my knee. At the desk, but it's actually quite hard to type around yeah. border terrier, especially with food like mine. Yeah. Um, so we sit on the sofa, and he snuggles up to me, and he's very happy. Um, except for when he realises he can't actually sit on my knee and then try to smash my laptop, right. which has happened more than once. So he is a delight. Sweet but he is actually a delight. Guy. He's my baby. <laughs> um, okay, from Nick Redfern. Hi, Nick Redfern. Um, more to the point, what's the naughtiest thing you've ever done? <laughs> Don't be shy. Well, we're not allowed to swear. Um, and, and not, oh, I think most of them are unrepeatable, certainly, on, on a, a daytime so, but, what, but what kind of naughty are you? Are you the kind of... What are you kind of naughty kind, are we talking about? Well, are you the kind of naughty that is, that is like... Uh, oh, God, if, like... If, I know, actually, no, it's too, it's too, it's putting you on the spot too much. I don't know. I didn't How do you interpret the word naughty? I don't know. I did, that's what I'm wondering. I'm kind of thinking like the naughtiest girl in the school, naughty rather than naughty, naughty. Mm. Um, my, my daughter's never forgiven me for when she was about seven. She was on this huge slide in, um, in the local forest park. And it, it, I mean, it was that massive. It was, and she was sitting at the top of it and she was taking too long to go down it. So her friend shoved her down it so she flew down it with immense speed shot off the end flew about six feet through the air i'm laughing even now and landed face down in a muddy puddle oh no <laughs> and i couldn't pick her up because i was laughing too hard you cruel <laughs> heartless woman i was even thinking about it, it was very very funny that's really funny and she yeah she's still angry about that was she I'm not devastated sure um she she was fine i mean i should clarify she clearly wasn't hurt apart mm -hmm. from maybe her dignity um, but she was mostly angry, oh, I'm covering my microphone, um, mostly angry that, that I found it so very, very funny. Um, I don't know if that's the naughtiest thing I've ever done. She's going to, one day you're going to fall over so badly and she's just oh, going to stand gonna there and laugh, laugh at you. She's gonna, yeah, she's totally going to be, that's payback mother. Um, so, so, yes, that's probably not the naughtiest thing, but one of the few things I can probably say on a daytime very good. OK, so Nikki Max. Hi, Nikki Max. What is the most essential thing you take with you on jollies? Sorry, import Im sorry important <laughs> author business. Ooh, I don't know. Hair straighteners? Yeah. 
hair straighteners to um, to try and defeat the frizz of constantly getting lost and therefore constantly being late for everything mm -hmm. um, and, and arriving in a, in a panic fluster because I have no sense of direction whatsoever. So you don't? None, none. I went to an event in Swindon in May and we were staying uh, on a on a on the farm where they they have the the literary festival in this you know slightly rambling farmhouse and i got lost four times trying to find my bedroom inside the house how i don't know <laughs> i don't know <laughs> i really don't know so you're the kind of person where i've got friends like this who are so kind of disorganize themselves and that kind of thing but can very for somehow manage to keep these little people in order and keep everything quite organized yeah yeah, I can. And then they get to where they're supposed to be, but you yeah, get lost. I get lost. I get lost. So um, I, I don't know how I get so lost, but but I, I think as well, you know, with with children, you just kind of get yourself in that mindset, don't you? Yeah. You probably find the same of, of right. We have to sort them out, and then we'll sort ourselves out afterwards. Um, and you just kind of do it, and then when it's yourself, you're like, oh well, I've got I've got time. I can, you know, it's not so important. Yeah. Um, but as for the getting lost, I, I yeah, that's that's just. That's just that's just silly. That's just one of those things. <laughs> yeah. That's just one of those things. So your hair so. straightener is your thing that you were taking. My hair with you straighteners. Ever. What about you? What would Probably you take? Probably the same. And tweezers. Yes. I just always yes. need to be able to get rid of those rogue hairs. Yes. See, I don't have hair straighteners today, and it's like it just affects my whole mood, my oh, whole day. Well, so your you hair should... looks much better than mine. Well, thank you very much. But what I mean is, <laughs> look, it's great. one of those things where if you're going on like a little kind of work jolly or yes. whatever, or a jolly, is a work jolly a jolly? A jolly no, jolly, I do. a work yeah. trip or a, a jolly. A very important work trip, yes. Yeah. I always accuse my husband of his work trips being jollies, so. Um, oh, I was having a conversation with this, but with a friend of mine this morning, a guy, he's, um, his wife always says that, that's, you're not going to work, you're having fun. He's like, I'm going to work. And I was like, this is an argument that's been for the, from the history of time that men and women have had, whichever one is going to work, the other one is at home, is saying, you're not really you're going. You're having a lovely time. You're having a lovely yes. time because you're not yes. at home. I'd have thought mine would have, my husband would have learnt by now not to send me photos of the lovely time he's having if he doesn't want it to be considered a jolly. Yeah. Um, so he, he did three weeks in Singapore last year and was, was texting me photos of, of cocktails and things. And I'm going, I'm three weeks at home with your children. Yeah. <laughs> I don't need to see your Singapore no. sling. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Well, look, those were the questions that I had on Facebook. Have you got different ones? Um, no, I think I have the same ones. I think I have the same ones. So, um, so what's so, the yeah. question that you've always wished you'd been asked in an interview? Oh. I don't what don't know. we know about you? What don't we know about me? I don't know. I think that everyone knows everything about me now. <laughs> and how does that make you feel like? So if you were, um, you know, unknown and you started this blog and now you've written these books, and I realise these are fiction, but there's probably quite a lot of you in them and in interviews you have to share a lot of yourself. How do you feel about stuff being out there about you? Um, I think I'm just an oversharer anyway. Mm -hmm. So, you know. I would probably tell people it anyway, whether they wanted to know or not, except not on a train because I'm not, I'm not that person. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, I've always kind of overshared a bit and then realised that maybe people didn't need to know that thing I've just told them. <laughs> do you ever do that though? Go to bed at night, just thinking, why? Why did, why did I say? Yeah. Oh God. Yes. What about you? All the, and yeah. every day. It's just basically what Instagram and Twitter is for me. Is it's just this huge opportunity for shame about an hour later <laughs> after every single post. I'm like, why did I need to tell people about that? I know, but at the time it seems funny. It does. Um, I, I, I'm terrible as well for that thing. I don't know if you did it as well, that thing of in your head it's really funny and you don't realise until you've said it out loud. Oh, that's just inappropriate. That's not even funny, that's just yeah. inappropriate. But sometimes like when you get away with something inappropriate, it's quite fun. I feel that way. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, well, that's us. We're done. Good luck with the journal. And good luck with the cows. Thank you and congrats on all your brilliant books. And you, and you. Thanks, Jill. Thank you. <laughs>